Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Six Months of Set Theory and Higher Order Logic. This is month number two, looking at operations and relations of sets for every single day for the whole month of October. We are almost at the end. In this video, we're going to be looking at what are partitions in set theory. Now, a partition of a class is exactly what it sounds like. It is where the elements of a class are partitioned into usually smaller classes which are mutually exclusive, they don't have any of the same members, and jointly exhaustive. And then those classes are combined into one larger class. For example, the class ABC has several partitions including the class of the class of A and the class of BC, and the class of the class of A, the class of B, and the class of C. Any grouping of the original members is acceptable, so the class of the class of A, B, and C, and the class of the class of A, C, and the class of B are also partitions of A, B, C. Basically, we're taking the members and we're splitting them up. We're adding extra brackets. In the same way that unions kind of shave off a pair of brackets, partitions add another one internally to the class. A more explicit way to define partitions is to say that they are a subclass of the power class of a set, or of a class. No member of the subclass is the null set, and no members share any members. They're mutually exclusive, and together all the members of the subclass include all members of the original class. They're jointly exhaustive. We're basically taking lines and just splitting up the original class. You can think of partitions as you're not going to change any of the letters in there. You might change the order. You're not going to change the letters. You're just adding sets of brackets around all of them such that they're all made, such that the new class is made up of the exclusively subclasses of the old class. If you imagine a set as a bucket of marbles, a partition is a bucket of those same marbles split up into separate bags. No marble can be in two bags, and all marbles must be in some bag, and no bags can be empty, so we can't have the null set in there. There might all, they might all be in one bag, so you have the, just the class of the class itself, or they might each have their own separate bag, so each member is split up into a separate class. The bucket full of bagged marbles is now a partition of the original bucket of unbagged marbles. So we haven't changed the marbles that are in the bucket, we've just added another set of containers within the bucket, such that all of the things that were in the bucket originally are contained by something and nothing's contained by multiple, and all the containers in there have something in them. We'll represent partitions of a class A as P with that kind of line through it, representing a partition as of A. You may also see this as P in script A. We'll define a partition of class A as for all A and all B. B is identical to the partition of A, it means by definition B is a subclass of the power set of A and the union of A equals B. So subset of the power set of A means that it's made up of subclasses. Um, the union of B equals A means that all members are somewhere and for all C C is a member of B implies that C is not the null set, so C isn't a member, and, or the null set isn't a member, rather, and for all D and all E, D is a member of B and E is a member of B implies that D equals E or the intersection of D and E is the null set. That whole section is saying that no members of our partition can share members themselves. Either they're the same thing or they don't share any members. Their intersection is the null set. That's another way to say that. We'll call this partition definition in proofs. Whew! It has been a long ride. Thank you all for staying with us and watching this whole series on set theory. We're through month two. I do not know when we will get to month three, where we'll have a bit of a focus on piano arithmetic. We'll get there some point. Uh, but I don't want to make predictions because the last time I did, it took me a lot longer to get back to it. So we'll see where we get back to it. Um, but we have one more video in the series, our special Halloween video on the magic of transitivity. Um, so check that out. Thank you for watching this series. Subscribe if you like the content. We do logic videos frequently here, but we also do videos on all sorts of things within philosophy. Um, every single week on Sundays normally. So subscribe, hit the notification bell if you're curious, and of course, watch this video and more here at carnades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.